Okay, as promised, I'm gonna do a fuel pump. Mm, but I wanna check the pressure on this one, see what she's getting. <clears throat> and I have an inline fitting, I can go right on the filter. And that's because the old Eldobrox, um, some of the videos, this guy was real, real Eldobrox. Actually, it was their, their site. He's saying they really need six PSI. That's like they're running. And some of these pumps are between four and ten. So let's see what we got with the old one before we get rid of it. That's the only thing left of my system that's original, so I want to get rid of it in case that diaphragm is what was clogging up my carburetor. Carburetor. And, uh... I looked everywhere to see where I bought this. I can't find the receipt digitally or, but I want a longer cable anyway. Cause this is a little, I could go like, I could tuck that in a lot nicer. And uh, it's down there by the fuel pump too. So, hmm, I don't know. I'll probably end up getting one online. Here's your basic fuel pressure setup. And this is the one I need, inline filter. Two hoses on either end, and then I'll hook up uh, this guy. Because it's this guy, probably. Or is it this guy? Oh, it's probably this guy. All right. That's just a basic Pittsburgh kit at a Home Depot. Well, they give you that, but uh, this fitting only fits. This fitting only fits directly on the gauge. The gauge has to be down there. It'd be nice if any of these rubber hoses would bring it up to a working height, but they don't give you any of that crap. Uh, so you'd have to get like some fittings and make something. FYI. And of course a little thread sealant. It's going to keep this from leaking. There's a guarantee it's going to leak. Ask me how I know. Isn't that your favorite, everyone's favorite saying, every video you watch? Ask me how I know. <laughs> what, 5 sixteenths? I run 3 eighths line. I mean, I could probably get it over there. But I need a little length of steel tubing. Where am I going to get some 3 eighths steel? I have this power steering line off the old... I guess this little section would be good. I guess I could cut that out. I'm done holding on to this part. Huh? I've not done this before, but I was watching my good buddy. And by good buddy, I mean I just watch his videos. No nonsense and know-how. And he reused one of these clamps. I was like, I never would think to. You know, you just get rid of them. You get a new one from parts, but hey, that ain't always the case. So let's see if we can reuse it. There's just one little bit here that you need to fold over. With something. Something better than that. There's that. And then and just get underneath it from what it looked like. It's a pick. You can pop that out of there. Yeah, like that. Hey, look at that. It is reusable. I don't need this clamp. I just, I just want this straight section here, 3 8 But that's good to know, huh? He was doing uh, CV joints, so it was a lot bigger than this. But same principle. And then, yeah, you put it back together, you can clamp it with a pair of side cutters right there. Very cool. And I will save this clamp. You know why? Because I'm a hoarder. Wow. Hacksaw really does a number on this, so make sure you clean it out. Nice round file, something. All right. Half hour later. Yes. Sometimes just setting up the tools takes time. Okay, so I got all that. Like, you know, as you can see, it'd be easier to have a hose on that gauge. Have it come up closer. Um, and this is most certainly going to leak fuel. But let's see if we can get it uh, fired up and looked at before this. No, here comes a noise maker. Let's try that again. We'll hit record.
So she looks like five or six PSI. I guess. Very hard to tell, and I don't know how accurate this gauge is going to be at low pressure like that. I love linear, linear things. So there's three lines before the five, and then four lines after the five. So that makes sense. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But there's only three lines between zero. What the hell sense does that make? Is that one and a half, two and a half, three and a half? Can't we just make things that mean something? All right. I think these are. Yes, they are. Seven sixteenths. I disconnected my battery because of positive cables here. Don't want any incidents. on them. Wow. I wonder if somebody put some money into this engine. I saw a 307 on Marketplace. The guy wanted like $1,500 for it. But, uh, nobody likes these engines, so putting money into them is, you know, they don't make any power. So it's kind of funny that somebody would do that, but I don't know, maybe these younger generations just want a V8. And boom, there's a fuel pump. That's simple. Okay, I'll zoom out for you here. You can see what we're working with. So we got, now I'm replacing this with a three, three Piper. So this is where it goes on to the engine. There's a pin, which we'll get to a push rod that uh, activates off the cam, and that makes your pumping action. This probably has been replaced, I can't remember. I think he told me he did, but just to be sure. So I'm gonna put a th the third pipe that I have on here is going to the uh, vent, to the gas tank. And the reason I'm doing that is this used to have a charcoal canister, so there's a vent pipe already here and you do get fumes from the tank and uh, so I'm just gonna tie into that and vent it back to the tank so that uh, or I don't know how that works is it yeah the pump must I don't know I could be digging myself into a corner here but we'll see I think it should work fine now I'm gonna zoom in here and show you get those hoses out of the way but that is a, uh, a block off plate too See that plate that holds your fuel pump and then that rod in the dead center focus focus that uh, rod is what we need to get back up in there because it's down it falls down now there is a bolt uh, hole on the side and you can drive a bolt in and it holds it in place or what we always did is you just put some bearing grease on it and it holds it Right up in place, and bearing grease is perfectly fine for the engine. But I'm gonna take that plate off because those usually leak oil too. I took out the two, they're very, very short, tiny bolts there. The plate, uh, sorry about the view here, I'll get those, the wire loom out of the way. Now, if you just pull this off, you gotta be careful of that pin. Did I just lose the picture there? I did lose that that shoulder down the way. So, see if this is on there without dropping the pin. Let's give it some love taps. 
Oh, there we go. Just need a little thing called leverage. All right, so that comes out. You get some oil, and then the pin comes with it. And try and put it back in the same way because it's got all that wear on it. And I've seen these where they round off on engines, you know, really bad engines, but you know, we're in good shape here. This uh, is what leaks too. They give me two gaskets. Maybe they want me to. But it's usually a longer. Yeah, it's a longer gasket. But I don't know. We'll figure something out here. I'm okay with RTD for this situation. And I see what looks like a little piece of metal filing right here. Now that's always good to see. That was sitting right in there. A snap ring. It looks like a snap ring. Interesting. All right, we're gonna break clean this up. Now, why was there a snap ring down in there? It looks like it's part of, it looks like the one that goes on my steering column. <laughs> it's not like off a wrist pin or anything. Is it, is it off the fuel pump, the old one? Could have been the one before this one. It was down in there in that little valley. Hmm. Oh well, not gonna worry about it. There's our new pump. I'm gonna look at this. There's two different lengths. Make sure those are the same. I think it's a big block, small block thing. Um, but that looks alright. So like, there's my three outlets I was saying. Feed, return, and a vent. locate my vent pipe and that'll be easy just 5 8 hose over to this so the pump I went with was what is a Delco it's Delphi which is a uh, division of AC Delco from what I remember I used to be good I don't know if I still are anymore but they give you a nice little diagram see that's the pump and rod I was talking about and they had some interesting instructions on holding that rod in there they said some sort of a hacksaw blade to like maybe slip in there and hold it up. Uh, but I'll show you another way. There's, they, I'm surprised I don't mention there's a bolt hole and like I said, you can use grease on that push rod. So yeah, they give me two gaskets. They clearly, I don't think you can use this one on the plate because then the plate comes down lower. There's always a different gasket. So let's see. All right, see that bottom bolt there? It used to be, I believe that's where the negative cable used to go, but it's just hanging out in there. But this top bolt is uh, an empty cavity that goes right into this oil. So what you do is you put a longer bolt in there and push it against the pin when you have it, the uh, push rod when you have it up, just to hold it there. And then you can um, take that bolt out. You do need, like this should be, a short bolt and it should be tight so that I mean that is a possible place for oil to leak so let me pull it right out and see what's going on all right let me get the push rod here show you what I'm talking about uh, here she is okay so that's the upper bolt I said it goes into the push rod cavity so what you want to do when you go back together is you put the rod up push it all the way up against the cam finger tight that bolt so that it holds this up Put your pump in there, then you got to take that bolt out, and you need to put a shorter one in. This one is, this one should be like this length. This was kind of going close to the pin cavity, and surprisingly I don't see any wear on there. Maybe that's it. No, I don't know. But there's a certain length before it hits the rod. So, capiche makes sense. This bottom bolt goes into no cavity, so maybe I can just move this one up to seal that hole up. Well, let's go clean up all these bolts, actually. I think I'm learning a lot about desert environments. Look at them. this hose is just put on there with the fuel filter. And I didn't crack it. And it's already cracked. I don't know, maybe it's just cheap hose that came with the Wix filter. I like Wix. No, no complaints there. 
you know, I really need to get a bench grinder. Ah, always had one growing up, and this thing's junk. Just trying to do without one is, in film, it's just a pain doing things by hand. I need tools. Yeah, I'm going to get all this gasket off there. For sure. Good as new. This is a side that goes to the block that I do not have a gasket for, so... We're just gonna do some ultra black gasket maker, which is fine. The biggest thing is you wanna let it set, so. That's what I've been gonna do. I think it has to come down around here. Probably should go look. It doesn't have to be that thick, cause it's getting pressed in there. And the last thing you want is this stuff in your engine, right? So, smear this around a little bit. It's not so thick. Once it hardens, it's okay. You know, or sets a little bit. Like if I put it in there now, it would press into the inside. We don't want that. Like that. We want it on the outs. The outside. Yeah, I don't think it has to come across here. I'll go look at the block, but I want that set up so it's a little tacky. Whatever they recommend. What do they recommend? Let's see. Oh god. Can't read that. Can find some glasses for that. Well, I was going to show you that method of holding that, but uh, I put this longer bolt in there, and it bottoms out before it even touches the pin. So I don't think it's drilled, threaded enough. So I'm just going to use this shorter bolt to plug the hole, put some thread lock on it, so it doesn't leak oil, and just do the grease method on the pin to hold it up in place, like I've always done my entire career. See if it works as good as I remember. Okay, get some low on grease here too. Voila. There's some stuff in the way now. Probably just have to go underneath. No. Can't find the hole, can you, Russ? Oh, it's way down there. Okay. Who put it down there? There we go. Look at that. See it like it's holding itself. Put that up there. Bam. Alright, got the plate set up. Make sure our pin stayed up there. It did. Put this guy in place. Actually, I'm gonna switch hands. Got one of the screws. I put a little thread sealer on it because I guess Loctite would be good too. But I'm all right with this stuff. I don't know. I'm pretty sure it's not in the passage. But it uh, definitely had oil all over the threads, so probably leaking down. It's a good idea to put something on there. So thread lock red, blue, green. I think red is a permanent. Blue is pretty much used for a lot of stuff coming apart here and there. I'm just going to leave those. Let's see, can I get those after the pump? I don't think so. Yeah, I better do them now. This will be 7 16ths. 
these guys. If I had that battery cable, this would be the time to do it, but it's gonna live over here. I think this lived over there too, so I guess I could put this over here. It's on the motor mount, that's why I got rubber all over it. Alright. Double check our pin again, it's up there. And let's torque those and put the pump. On. Push that button a little too hard. Alright, so see I got some grease on the pump. We don't want anything dry. Uh well I gotta go get the gasket. No, I guess I should put the gasket in there, that would probably help. Gasket got a little smear just to hold it on the pump. That's all I want it for. I don't want it to make a gasket. I'm just using it as a glue. You can use spray tack if you want. That's good stuff. This way the gasket won't move. Well, let's see if I can do this with you there. Light here. This is going to go up there. I think this pain the crap this is. Whose idea was this? I get everything on my hose clamp. That's gonna be tightened down there. What am I always preaching? Okay. Don't tighten any bolts until you have them all started. Okay. Yeah, don't tighten any bolts so you have them all started. I have to put those two in to get them lined up. Now I can tighten those bottom ones. Alrighty, back together. I had to rewind the video. It looks like I put my harness on the other side, which is probably better for me anyway. I put the fuel gauge back on. Let's go fire it up and see what we see for pressure. Well, that was my mistake. That return line off the pump, I was calling it a vent. I thought they... It was a vent. It actually is a return line. And I thought because it was so small, it, that's not what it was. But so it was dumping fuel, and I hooked it up to that vent line to the canister that goes back to the tank. Let's see what happens. If it, am I going to just create like a vapor lock situation? I wonder. I may have misthunk this whole thing. Let's fire it up. Put a magnet on this. If that wouldn't happen. <sighs> what a day! What a day! steady fuel pressure. Who would have thunk? But the more I think of it, I may have created a fuel uh, situation. These aren't vented caps. 
So I just took what would have been a vent for the tank and I'm pushing return fuel back into it. So am I looking at a vapor lock situation possibly? Well, let's take it for a ride, run it, get it hot, see what happens. Well, there she is, folks. That's no problems yet. Uh, I checked the gas cap for any pressure. There was nothing. That's the return hose there. I tied it off. And it goes over to where the canister vent would have plugged in. And it's a return line now. Now, did I create a problem? Hmm. Well, technically, where's the gas tank venting right now? Nowhere, right? Because I'm positive, almost positive, these caps are not vented. But, I don't know, this is a locking cap. I bet that's what it was. They, the three-port fuel pump was later years when the gas caps were vented, maybe? Or vice versa? I mean, it says could be pressure, blah, 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 and move slowly. I don't see, unless that center is considered a vent. I don't know. The, the engine's hot. I got it hot. Um, you know, starts right up. Let's try it again now that it's been sitting a few minutes. That's the only thing I could think of this when it would be an issue. Hot summer day. This thing always lights up. Yeah. Well, I don't know. You know, it was just me trying to clean up my fuel system. You know, I wanted a new pump anyway. Now the whole fuel system's good. The only thing I added was that return. Is it going to be an issue? Uh, we'll find out. I'll keep you posted. Any of you guys know, let me know. Anybody out there actually watching this. But, yeah, went into a lot of detail here. I like to do that because a lot of these videos just people just throw the parts on don't tell you anything so that doesn't help anybody does it and I just get the old this mess because this is what's that doing am I gonna zip tie that too maybe a vice grip all right bye bye anybody watch that movie the tender bar yet Ben Affleck good movie I like it. Uh, he starts out with his Boston accent and then moves into a New York accent, which is quite funny to me. But uh, it was good. He did good in it. But this is a scene that bothered me. A lot of driving scenes, beautiful car. I don't remember what it was, 60s, 70s, muscle car, which clearly had chrome wiper arms. But the wiper blades, which are in this shot, just like this the entire movie, are black. And it just annoyed the crap out of me. They're not supposed to be black in that era. And they should have had chrome, right? And that's why I got these. They looked ridiculous. They look like some cheap AutoZone ones. And what it is, is the owner of the car, he got paid probably 300 bucks a day to have his car in the movie. That's how it works. And uh, he, uh, there's another highly paid person who seeks out period correct things in films. And he should have said, hey, can we get some uh, $20 Anko wiper blades on this thing? like Mike the Fixer got. <laughs> That's what annoys me. There's some other Hollywood movies that screw up things like dialogue. They said like, oh, we gotta jump the starter. You don't jump the starter. You jump the solenoid. Anyway. Okay, I make mistakes. Just trying to be fancy. So I'm going back to the original two-port uh, two fuel pump. So what I did is I, I completely eliminated the venting system for this. So you would have your tank, the feed, no return, no return on these early systems. They just had a, a vent that would go to the canister. This feed went to the pump, the pump went to the engine. So I basically took my, my vent and I was feeding fuel back to the tank. So I had no venting. Uh, so fuel builds up pressure. Hot summer days, they get hot, and vapor lock becomes a thing. 
and that vapor lock is just a known issue with these Chevys anyway, because you got your fuel pipes coming up, you got hot headers, you got the hot intake. Uh, the center port of the intake has a, they have a, exhaust gases going across them. So the fuel in, in the carburetor will get hot too. Um, that's why I am putting a spacer back in here. They, I got one coming an inch higher. That's all to fight issues like that. And you know, this works now, it's fine, but um, I do. I, I always had hot starting problems. I just don't want to add to that. And I think that's what I did, so. Not a big deal, pump's $20, we're gonna put, put the right one on there. All right, here's this little uh, technical uh, thing. You can see the gasket stayed. You know, in case you're ever wondering, like I just did, remember I just had a little bit of tackiness to stick it to the pump? So the gasket did stay on the block a little bit. And here I had some thread tape, just a little bit, and it appears to have stayed. It didn't go into the pump or anything, so that's good to know. And then the bolts, I had the thread, you know, there's just a little bit, it's still on there, so. Just a schmear, they say, right? And then there's the gasket, you can see it's still, uh, I gotta scrape that. But, when the pin is down, I think I should be able to slide it back up without taking the plate off. Now, I'm having a little trouble getting my pin to stay up, <clears throat> and I don't wanna take this cover off again. I put some grease on it, but it just doesn't want to stay. So I'm going to try and just do it with a screwdriver, they say. And in the uh, pump instructions, they say hacksaw blade. So I'll just go down here, hold the pin up while I slip the, the fuel pump in. So that's, I'm going to have to do that off camera. I can't get you in there, but that's my method. We'll see if it works. All right, so that all worked. Was able to screwdriver slip that on the. Actually, I turned the motor over so the pin was in a different position. You know, so it went up a little bit higher. That way, I could get the pump on there. Otherwise, there's tension on it. You know, so. But you are able to do it. You can slip it up there with a screwdriver. And like I said, the instructions mentioned a hacksaw blade, just because it's really thin. Um, I was able to do that, and I got my canister vent hooked back up. And I actually tested this just for hoo haws. So if I blow air through here, it does come out this. So the idea is this should go to. I think I'll go pour. I'm, I don't know. Should I hook it up? Otherwise, it's just you know venting fumes right here. You know, not the end of the world, but it does smell. And so maybe I'll just run a vacuum line underneath this radiator hose and go to my ported vacuum on the carburetor. Um. Yeah, that's that. So I got a spacer block coming to bring the carb up. That'll help with hot starts. And what else I got? I think that's it. All right.